Hello. I want to show you how uh, we can use Visual Studio and Web Essentials to very easily add subtitles to our HTML5 video. And for that, we're going to use a new and emerging standard called uh, uh, Web Video Text Track Format. So it's a new file type. And um, it has never been easier to do this, and it's uh, supported in all major browsers, uh, including Internet Explorer, Chrome, um, Safari, Opera, and so on. So let's take a look at Visual Studio here. I got my video element, and um, I load two sources in there just to make sure that it works in all the different browsers, um, WebM and MP4. Um, and then I have a track element. And the track element is what ties our um, subtitles to our video. So first of all, we have to specify what kind of subtitles that we're dealing with here, or what kind of track we're dealing with, whether or not it's subtitles or captions or, or anything else. And so there's different levels of support for each of these, but all the browsers support subtitles. So let's stick with that. Uh, next, we have to specify what language the subtitles are in. And we can specify any, any ISO uh, language code here that we, uh, that we have our subtitles in. Then we're going to have uh, a link or uh, reference to our VTT file, our video text track file. And we're going to take a look at that in a second. Next, we add a label. And we can see how this label shows up in the browser um, when we run the site. And finally, we have a default attribute. So this is not strictly necessary according to the spec, but if you don't have the default attribute, um, Internet Explorer will not display the subtitles. Just a little thing to remember. Now let's take a look at our VTT file. This is where we have our subtitles. So it has to start with Web VTT. It just has to start with that. Um, that's according to the standard. And then from here on, it's kind of simple. We have a, a time span basically. What we're saying here is that we have uh, one second into the movie until three seconds into the movie we're going to display this subtitle. So these are timestamps. Hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. Um, so we can be very granular here. And then it's just repeated the same pattern all the way down. This, this uh, file can obviously grow quite large and um, but you kind of get the idea here. It's, it's pretty simple. Now, Web Essentials gives us this nice syntax highlighting, and this syntax highlighting also helps us um, to avoid errors. So, for instance, this is actually um, valid according to the specification that you don't have to have two digits here for the hours. Um, but if you don't have two, Internet Explorer will not uh, display the subtitles. Um, the file is, is sort of invalid in Internet Explorer. So, remember two. Uh, digits here, and you can see then you get the nice syntax highlighting, so you know everything is okay. And finally, because this is a new file extension .vtt, we have to go into our web config. So find your system .web server element, and uh, go down to static content, and then we're going to add a my map. We have to map the .vtt file extension to the content type text slash vtt. First of all, because that's part of the standard. It has to be served with this content type. And second of all, if we don't do this step, then our web server, the IIS or IIS Express, will not be able to actually serve our file and the browser will just get a 404. Um, so remember this step. Now let's take a look at what this looks like here in the browser. So we can see we now have our um, subtitles and we also get this automatically by the browser this little menu so I can turn them off and I can see that I can choose from English I can only choose one here and this is a label where it says English right here and that came from right here in our markup in our HTML so whatever I write here is whatever is going to be uh, presented in the uh, browser but we can have multiple tracks, one for each language. So we can go in here and we can add an additional track and we can say, hey, this is Danish and 
so I'm just going to point it to the same thing, but you would have a different file for each language, obviously. And let's just call this one Danish. Now let's run this again. We can now see here that we have another language to choose from. And we can just switch between the different languages as we see fit. All this comes from the HTML5 standard and is fully supported by all of the browsers. So that's very, very cool. We can do a little bit more in some of uh, the WebKit based browsers and Blink as well. So that means Opera and uh, Safari and uh, Chrome, they can do a little bit extra. Um, and so if we go back to our VTT file here, what I want to do is that I want to find a specific character in my movie and make sure that whenever this character speaks, the subtitles have a different color. So let's go down here to, to, uh, to this guy and um, we, we can add like an HTML element basically. Um, like here, this is the syntax. So V and this is for voice. So now we're going to say, hey, this is the voice of the character Yoast. I, I just made up this string. It could be anything. You decide what this is. It is just a string. It's just an identifier. And um, here we just say that, yep, we identify that this specific piece of subtitle is spoken by Yoast. That is how you pronounce this. So I'm going to do that for both of these two here. You see we get the nice syntax highlighting. And um, now we can just save that and we can go to uh, our style sheet. And here you can see how we can use the new sudo element uh, Q to um, catch a specific, in this case, a specific uh, uh, voice character, Yoast. So I'm only specifying Yoast. Um, I could say this is for everyone by doing this. That means now all my um, all the subtitles are yellow, but I just want it to be for Yoast. So now if we go to uh, to Chrome here, we can see that uh, we now have different colors for the different actors here. So this is very, very uh, cool. We get a lot of help from um, CSS editor in Visual Studio and um, Web Essentials to colorize our uh, VTT file so that uh, it can help us to uh, avoid um, writing any mistakes and, and so on. So let me know what you think. Um, thanks for watching.